Hi everyone, uh, hopefully you all can hear me okay. Um, but I am very excited to be here to talk about Wagtail CMS and how it makes Django more user and developer friendly. Uh, my name is Sarah Hines. A little bit about me, I'm a self-taught developer. I was the program director for Django Girls Kansas City for the past two years. I've spoken at DjangoCon EU this past summer about how to get more women in tech. And um, I was a Wagtail developer for the past three years. I recently switched jobs, but um, I've used Wagtail for quite some time. So just jumping right in, on the agenda for today, we're gonna talk about what Wagtail is, if you're not familiar. We will build a blog site together, and then we'll extend that site's functionality with some cool new features. So what is Wagtail? Well, it's a content management system for Django. And you might think, why do we need a content management system for Django? Doesn't Django already have a really great admin that we can interact with? And um, I'd have to agree with the two scoops of Django authors saying that the Django admin was not intended for the end user. And here it is, quick refresher. Um, I mean, it's fine. Like, you know, you can go in to groups as a developer and add a class um, or an instance of a class and change your models there. But if you're just a non-technical person, um, you don't really understand what this layout means. Um, you might get lost and there's not really a good hierarchy to like how to edit things. Um, so it's not the best graphical user interface, but it's great for, you know, developers who know exactly what they're doing and what needs to be done. So some pros about Wagtail. There is rapid page development as a programmer. There's a beautiful user-friendly admin, and it's beginner-friendly, especially for developers. Some cons, there's not as much documentation. The people that use um, Wagtail as a subject of Django, it's not very high. And so since there are fewer users, uh, there aren't gonna be as many of your questions that are on Stack Overflow already, which is kind of a bummer. There's my reaction when my question is not on Stack Overflow already. There's always the source code though, right? So um, <laughs> it's, it's pretty simple to use, so hopefully um, most of your questions are already answered. Okay, so let's build a site. For every good conference talk, you kinda wanna have a theme, and so I recently moved from Kansas City to Seattle, so I thought, hey, let's build a blog website that helps teach people from the Midwest or the East Coast um, adjust to their new lifestyle in the Pacific Northwest because it can be very different. So, um, yeah, there's lots of new Seattleites coming in, a thousand per week, so let's, let's build them some tips and tricks um, for surviving. Okay, your goals as the webmaster. You want to get your site up and running fast. You have a day job, let's say, and although you do want to help other people get to know um, the new city, this isn't how you want to spend all of your free time. So you need to get it up running fast, and you need to be as hands-off as possible after the site's live. You don't want to push up a bunch of code. You want it to be very easy to just write a blog post whenever you want. Okay, so we'll get started here. Um, this should look pretty similar to Django at this point. You do a pip install of Wagtail. Um, you do Wagtail start, and then your project name, we're calling ours Surviving Seattle. Uh, you change directories into your project, install requirements, migrate, create super user, run server, all that good stuff that you're probably used to if you've used Django before. So when you run server, you get something like this. This is kind of ugly. That's fine. It's just a temporary homepage um, template, and we're going to get rid of it pretty quickly. But if you follow that link to the admin, this is a lot different than the Django admin. And you notice the Django admin was a little bit ugly. And this is quite beautiful. And it's way more intuitive. You know that you're making a website and you're going to add pages. This is a blog site. It's easy to see, oh, there's a big button. That's probably where I'm gonna end up adding my pages. Um, there's a settings on the, on the left hand here. You know where to add images. It's a lot more intuitive. So back to these commands that we just ran. Um, the Wagtail start surviving Seattle. Um, it's a lot like starting up a Django project, and it does start a Django project for you. But it does a lot of other really cool things for you as well. You get for free this really cool home app. And in that home app, you'll see um, a special home underscore page HTML template, and you'll also see your existing models. And you can tell there's a migration right here, so we know there's something going on in our models already, although um, not a whole lot is happening, but it's just kind of a preface for what's coming next. So in your models, you'll see that you'll have a class. It's called home page in title case. Um, the last word of your class has to be page. And then you have a corresponding home underscore page, which is um, your class name, but in snake case. 
And if you do these things correctly, a lot of magic happens. So back to the home models.py. Here's what we've got. So we've got this really cool uh, Wagtail Core Models import page, and that's what we're going to inherit from, and we've got this home page class. And that does a lot of stuff for us already. This awesome naming convention lets you forget about views. You don't have to write any URLs, and you can really just focus on making pages and spinning up models and getting your site up and ready fast. So to make this a little bit more interesting, we're gonna add some models to our class. So here we've got this new thing called a rich text field, and that is from the Wagtail core fields. And this is kind of like a text field um, with Django, except for it's on steroids. And it allows you to get um, this cool WYSIWYG, or what you see is what you get editor in the admin. And so you can do things like add headings, add bullet points, all of these really cool features that you don't have to write in Markdown or HTML. So it makes um, adding it in the admin really easy. You also have this thing called content panels at the bottom, and this is how you declare what you wanna show up in the Wagtail admin when you wanna add your content. So instead of you know, going to like an admin.py file or something like that, you just declare it right here. So cool, so I'm gonna show a video of what this looks like. Uh, sure, okay. So we're gonna create a home page here in the Wagtail admin. You can see how easy it is. So we're gonna add a child page to our root. We'll add a title here. We're gonna call it Surviving Seattle. We'll add some content. You can see, um, here's your WYSIWYG editor. You can add a bunch of cool stuff there. Um, this is your promote panel. The slug comes from the title that you just gave it. It auto-populates. And we're gonna show in menus, which is something we'll talk about later. Now we'll go into settings and we're gonna change the site from the default homepage template to the new one we just created. So we change the root page here and we'll select the new one and hit save. Okay, cool, now we go back and we just wanna double check that the change we made actually worked and we see this globe and that means that um, that is actually our new homepage. So everything worked out fine. Okay, so if we went to that site now, it would still show that really ugly default homepage because we haven't done anything to the template yet. So. Let's go back, and this is a pretty standard Django template. Um, extends from a base. Um, you've got your block content that you know you can swap out. So again, there's the ugly one. Um, we wanna, here's just a reference back to the model we added, it was a body. So we're gonna plop that into our content. And now we've got um, page title and page body uh, with this rich text filter. And that rich text filter, it lets you use those rich text fields that we added in our models. Um, and that's what displays everything nicely. If you leave that off, um, you're gonna get some weird behavior on the front end. So cool. Also, just wanted to point out, page is your context. So you see page.title or page.body. Um, you can also use self.title or self.body. It's just something Wagtail does. Okay, cool. So now if we go to our local host, you can see our new site, Surviving Seattle. We've got a nice little body there, um, and everything's looking good so far. So we're gonna extend this functionality a little bit further because the home page is just kind of like the hello world of web development. So um, let's do something a little more interesting. So you're gonna start um, app just like Django. We're gonna make one called blog. And in the blog models, uh, we're gonna make this blog index page. Um, again, this is title case. The last word is page. Um, it inherits from the Wagtail page class. Uh, we're gonna just add some simple models here, char field, rich text field, great. We'll add the content panel so that we make sure it shows up in the admin. And now we'll create um, a corresponding template. And we just created blog index page, the class, and so this has the corresponding snake case. Um, and that's where all the magic happens, which you'll see soon. Okay, so this in blog index page.html, We've got some, some interesting things here. We're just gonna use our title, body, subtitle, great. Nothing super interesting yet. And then we zoom in for this for loop at the bottom. And some cool stuff is going on here. Um, we've got for post and page get children. And page here is the blog index page. And we haven't made any blog posts yet or even a blog post class. But we know in the future we're gonna wanna display all the posts that belong to the index page. So that's where the get children goes. And doing that in the Wagtail admin with get children is really sim super simple. Okay. 
you'll also notice um, to get the link to the blog post, you can just use this really simple tag called page URL and pass it a page object, and it makes linking to posts really super simple. Okay, so now we're gonna make a blog page class, and this is gonna be for the individual posts that we'll wanna display on the blog index page. Okay, so back to our blog models. This is gonna go beneath your blog index page. We're just gonna make a simple class called blog page. Again, title case, this word has to be page, and it inherits from the page. We're gonna make some models, things that make sense for a blog. Date, summary, body, all sounds good. Below that, we add our content panels to make sure it shows up in the Wagtail admin. And now we make our template. Okay, so here we go. Um, we've got, this is another way you can do um, URLs really easily in Wagtail. Um, you can do page and you can use get parent to get the parent URL. And then that's a really good way to return to the blog category. Okay. Cool, so we're gonna add our blog category page here, select blog index page, we'll add a title. We're gonna call this category hiking tips and tricks, something that you might wanna do in Seattle. We're just gonna add a body here. All right, cool, publish that. And then we're going to add a blog post to this blog category. So we're gonna add the blog page type we're gonna call it Don't Forget the 10 Essentials, which is, if anyone goes hiking, you know, those are the things you need to bring. Um, it's got a really good date picker. We're gonna add a summary. We're just gonna copy pasta some, some text from Social Good Ipsum, because we're in the Pacific Northwest. All right, we're gonna publish that. Great. So that was pretty simple. And then, if you go back to the front facing side, Um, look at your URL structure. So this is the blog category. This is your pay, yeah, your post, and it just does that for you. Like, I didn't write any views. I didn't write any weird regular expressions in URLs. I hate writing regular expressions. And I didn't have to remember any like weird URL syntax um, when linking to it in the template. So it's all pretty easy. We didn't do a whole lot of work, and we have a pretty functional blog site already. And then, just to kind of see how this scales, I added a few more blog posts and categories, and when I did that, it looked good, but the post order was a little bit strange um, by using Get Children to display. So you'll see my first post July 1st, and then the next post August 1st, and then the last post August 28th. Now, you know, when you're posting on blogs, you know, people are going to be expecting that the newest blog comes from the top. And this is pretty easy to do, rather than this like, where the oldest post is at the top. Um, so let's display these a little bit more intuitively, and we can do this pretty easily. So we're gonna override the get context method for the um, blog index page. We've got, let's zoom in a little bit, um, self.getchildren, um, self being the blog index page, get children being the blog post here. Uh, we only wanna select the live ones. Uh, you can do drafts in Wagtail, but we don't wanna display any drafts. And then we're gonna order by the descending um, first published at. So that little negative sign just means do the opposite. So it's pretty much like saying last published at. Um, and then we add the blog pages to the context. We can reference it back in the template. And there we go. Now on our blog index page, we can replace um, in our for loop page.getchildren, we just replace it with blog pages. So that's what it used to look like. This is what we're changing it to. And cool, now we've got it in the right order. That was pretty easy. All right, now we wanna do something, we wanna add all the blog categories to the home page. Um, and we don't really care what order they're in because it's kind of up to the content editor or us. Um, because you know, blog posts, it makes sense to do them in descending order, but you know, the categories are just kind of how we feel in the moment. So using page.getchildren is totally fine here. So in the home page, we're gonna loop through all of the home pages children, which is our blog index pages. 
um, and then just list the title and the body. So pretty simple there, and you get something like this. So we've got hiking tips and tricks, surviving the rain, pretending to like Dave Matthews Band, which has been the hardest one for me. <laughs> Public transportation options and dressing in all black. I did not wear my Seattle attire today. It was a little too hot for, for San Diego, but normally I'm in all neutrals now. All right. <laughs> Uh, all right, so <laughs> this is, uh, if you do want to change the order, let's say that, you know, I realize now that it rains nine months out of the year in Seattle, so maybe surviving the rain is a little bit more important than hiking tips and tricks, and we want to change the order of that. Uh, Wacktail makes it really easy. So, one last video for you all. Oops. Um. Okay, um, before I start, um, so the default order that it shows is um, the last page that you edited, so which is really nice if you find yourself going back and editing a page, but to um, get to the ordering, you just hit this little ordering button, it puts it in the real order, and you just drag and drop. And I don't know if you've ever tried to like change the order of something in the Django admin, but it's not very fun. So this is, <laughs> this is really helpful, especially if you're trying to like help your content team who's, um, who wants to change the order of stuff on a, their whim, and it's not, there's not really a logical reason behind it. Um, this is really helpful. Okay. All right. So we will now see that Surviving the Rain is up above Hiking Tips and Tricks. That was pretty easy. Okay, so what else can we do? We've already made a blog. Um, there's a couple ways we can extend the site functionality based on what we've already learned today. So Wagtail revolves around the concept of hierarchical tree structures. Um, if you have a computer science degree, you're, I'm sure you're very familiar with trees. Um, if you do not have a computer science degree, you also are familiar with trees. You might just not know it yet. This is, this is our tree structure right here. Um, we've got home pages with our root. We have a bunch of children. These are our blog post categories. And then these children have their own children, so these blog posts. Um, so you've used this with, with like your operating system. Or you can change directories down into like a child folder and then list those files in the directory. Um, it's all kind of the same concepts here. So because it's set up like this, this gives you access to a lot of cool methods that you can take advantage of. So we've already talked about get children, get parent, um, but you can also do get ancestors for um, like great-grandchildren or great-grandparents um, and siblings. That's another relationship that's really powerful. Um, you also can use these in the query sets as well, which is really nice. Um, it's like these two things do the same depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Um, and this makes creating nav bar is really easy, and our site right now is really lacking navigation. So we're just gonna make a quick template tag and kind of tie it all together. So we're gonna start off by creating a nav text.py. Um, here's kind of the full text, but we'll zoom in to focus on the good stuff. So we're gonna make this get nav bar. Um, we'll do, we wanna get the um, main site, and then from that site, get the root page. Um, and these things, if you're wondering where like site.objects come from, in the first video, whenever we change the default home page, um, or the default root page, um, this is where it comes from, and this is your default site. Uh, you can have multiple sites running in Wagtail, but it's a little out of scope for the presentation. So in this instance, it's just the default site. Um, and then we want to do home page, get children to get all those blog categories. We only want the live ones. And then there's something new called in menu. And this is a really great little tool too as well. Um, so you'll see that this is when you're editing a page. Content is where you would add the new text and titles and things. And the promote panel has all this extra fun stuff like your slugs. Um, and also this um, little Boolean to show in menus. So sometimes you don't want to show every single menu in your navigation. Sometimes you do. So you can toggle that on and off there. And you just return pages so you can use it in your template. OK. So now we make the actual template for the template tag called navbar. This is a really simple for loop. Just loop through your pages. We just spit out the page URL and the page title. Load that in the base HTML so you see it on every page. Cool, there's us loading our template tags. There's us calling that method. And then cool, so we've got, now we can access any of these blog categories from any page on the site. 
you can take this a step further too with all the things that we've kind of learned already. Um, you can create an app dropdown because you can nest get children indefinitely. So it makes it really easy to do something like this where you display all the blog posts underneath the blog category and you do that pretty quickly. So hopefully you learned a little bit about Wagtail today. We built a site together in about 25 minutes and then we extended that site with the new navbar functionality. Now, I like barely scratched the surface of Wagtail in the past 20 minutes. There is so much more it can do for you. Um, but those are some of my favorite features for like small marketing websites. Um, I encourage you, if you found this talk useful, to go explore their other, um, their other features that they've got. And if you're interested in looking at these slides later, you can find them at sheins.github.io slash Wagtail. And that's all I have for today. Thanks so much for coming to my talk.